You're probably wondering what kind of video is this. Well, Andrew was at the flea market this morning with John at 6.30 in the morning. He got home at 8 o'clock and he's got three giant boxes. He spent $175 and he's been dying to show me this stuff and I told him you can't show me until I have my camera because I want it to be like a mystery unboxing. I want to see the stuff for the first time with my viewers. My family calls it my superpower. It's my ability to see value in things that other people might overlook. Sometimes I go picking with my boyfriend, sometimes it's my best friend Sue, and sometimes it's my kids. But at the end of the day, it's all about having fun and hopefully just maybe making a profit. Okay, well out on the table here in front of me, I have everything from our last two days shopping with Sue, but in reality for me, it was just one day. Uh, we went to two different thrift stores. We went to the Community Aid and we went to Goodwill, but I actually broke it out into two videos. So we're gonna talk about everything that we got, what we paid for it, uh, what it is, and how much I can expect to get for it on eBay. Uh, but before I get to that, I did wanna let you know that I'm gonna put some bonus footage at the end of this video. It's kind of a shopping video, but kind of a whole video at the same time. Andrew had gone to the flea market by himself before I even woke up like weeks ago. And um, he bought a bunch of stuff and he brought it home and I sat on the porch and kind of went through it. And so one of those things was a giant postcard collection. So a lot of you have been asking, where are the postcards coming from? Those of you who follow me on eBay, uh, that would be where they came from. Andrew went and bought a huge postcard collection. So uh, we've been putting those up on the eBay. You did not miss a haul video. I just never got the footage out. I didn't really, uh, the problem was we started filming the video and never got to finish it because I had to run and just never got around to finish filming the video. So I'm going to put some bonus footage at the end. There is no finale to the video. It just kind of ends because I couldn't finish filming it. Uh, but I still wanted to share the footage with you guys so you guys can watch that at the end of this. But enough about that. Let's talk about everything we got in these shopping videos. So. Let's talk first about Community Aid. I'm gonna put a total spend up here in the corner uh, because I've already peeled off the tags and I honestly can't remember what I paid for this stuff. We only got three items at Community Aid. It was not a good day at Community Aid. It was kind of sparse. There wasn't a whole lot there. Uh, we got this vase, which I liked because the lines, it's vintage. It does have a mark on the bottom, but I could not decipher it. It is so faint that I just have no idea what it says. So I'm gonna be selling it as a vase and not as whatever the mark says that it is. Unfortunately, because perhaps the mark is some super rare maker and I'm just gonna lose out on money. It's okay. Uh, I only paid a couple dollars for it. <laughs> Somebody else will enjoy it. Um, so this piece right here, I would expect to get, I don't know, 25 to $30 for just because of the vintage appeal, because of the lines, it's a nice face. It is ceramic. And that's really all I have to say about that. Uh, the other item, there was, there was a lot of concern in the comments that these were ivory, these hippos. These are not ivory. Uh, these are soapstone. Uh, we used to have a friend who was from Kenya and he would go home to visit and when we co he would come back He would bring us sculptures made out of soapstone. It's kind of their souvenir They just have souvenirs carved out of soapstone. It's just they're th it's a thing um, So that's what these are. These are more than likely souvenir pieces uh, from Africa uh, You can see at the carved marks you can actually see on the bottom here where the insides were carved out. So these are not worth a terrible amount of money. Ooh, there we go, I was really dark for a second. Uh, they're not worth a ton of money. For the pair, I would probably expect to get 15 to $20 for the pair, because they just don't sell for that much. Um, they are souvenir pieces from Africa. Uh, so that was everything we got at the community. Like I said, it was pretty lame. I mean, normally I think we just have a whole table of community aid stuff and this time we only have three things. This is the worst I think we've ever done at community aid as a matter of fact. Uh, but then we moved on to the Goodwill and we had a really good day at the Goodwill. So let's talk about that stuff real quick. We are going to start with our little Delft blue houses. We got two of them. 
Uh, the first one I thought was just a little house figurine like that you would put on the shelf and you know a little, a little trinket but apparently as I was listing it it occurred to me that this is actually a pepper shaker it has a P on the back of it it has a single hole in the top and it has a, a hole in the bottom so I guess there would have been a stopper down here see I just figured this was like the ceramic piece I couldn't figure out the hole in the top eventually it just dawned on me I don't know uh, but I honestly thought it was just a little shelf piece, but it's a pepper shaker. So for this piece, I would expect to get, I don't know, five to eight dollars because it is a single. It does not have a salt friend to go with it. This piece right here, uh, this is either for incense or, uh, cigarettes. And there are two notches here where you would put your cigarettes or your incense and the smoke would come out of the chimney. This is probably also a souvenir piece. It's marked Delft's Blue. Uh, this piece right here would sell probably between $12 and $18. But I thought they were just neat little pieces, especially the way they were sitting on the shelf, just side by side like this. A little village, a little Delft's Blue village. So, uh, at, We also got, let's see, this book end here. Now, I'm almost positive it is a spaniel. Uh, we kind of went back and forth about that, but I'm pretty sure this is a spaniel. I grew up with a black carker spaniel, and I'm pretty sure this is a spaniel. I paid $3 for this. It is a single bookend, uh, but the beauty about a single bookend is you can actually stack the books against the shelf and use it to cap off the end of the books. For this piece, I would probably expect to get 18 to 20 dollars for this it's really heavy i think it's probably it's possible it's chalkware I, I don't know it's just real heavy i like it i like the lines of it it's very vintage and the dog's in good condition the only chipping that i've noticed is around the base and the back so it's in good condition i was actually really pleased with that the cocker spaniel that I have when I was a kid, I used to dress it up in like boas and tutus and well, I'm pretty sure that dog hated me, but <laughs> my mom has all these pictures of me like smiling with the dog and the dog's like, oh my gosh, this tiny human is torturing me. <laughs> uh, this little ashtray, I was so excited to find this. It is a little dog with a firefighter's hat on and a hydrant and it's an ashtray you put your cigarettes there and it's like the dog is putting out your cigarettes <laughs> i thought this was so neat it is marked japan and honestly i'm i can't find another one like it i'm not sure how much it would go for i don't know if this would be something that would appeal to people who collect ashtrays uh, for me if i was judging this piece without knowing the market for ashtrays, I would say this would probably sell between 18 and $24. But who knows, this could be like some super rare collector's ashtray and it could go for more money. But I thought it was darling and so we grabbed it. Also, we've got plates. These plates are actually pretty old. They have a mark on the back and I do believe it is German. Uh, but they are dessert plates. I like them because they kind of have a flow blue. And I liked the way the color just kind of leaches out into the white. I, I like plates like that. I don't know what it is. So for these plates, there was a set of four of them that had sold on eBay for only $10, which made me a little bit nervous. Uh, I've got eight of them, so I'm thinking I could probably get, I want to say 28 to 35 because I have more quantity, the price goes up. Uh, so I think that's probably, unless I split them into two sets of four, but I'm not sure yet how I want to parse those out because the, the fruit is all, there's a couple different kinds of fruit actually. We've got what appears to be pomegranates. I'm assuming those are pomegranates. And then we've got cherries. If you guys watched the video yesterday, you saw that on the very front of the stack, there are strawberries. So there's all sorts of different fruits on these plates. But the nice thing about these plates is they don't have chipping on the edge. 
I mean, a lot of the times I come across old plates like this and they're just chipping on the edge. Now these plates do have wear. I mean, they would have been, you can see where there was gold bands around the edge and the, the gold is all worn off, unfortunately. But there is no chipping that I've noticed. I haven't looked at every single plate, but it's, there's no noticeable chipping that's like, ooh, yeah, half those plates are chipped. Okay. So, oh, our little, uh, a little crackle glass pitcher. Now what I like about this crackle glass pitcher, this is Sue actually grabbed this and handed it off to me because she knows I love crackle glass. What I like about this pitcher is the weight in the bottom. The, the glass is about this thick in the bottom and there's just so much weight to it. It just, it feels nice. It feels like, it feels good. Uh, there is a rough pontal scar on the bottom, but it's just a little pitcher with an applied clear handle. But the color is really nice, especially out in the, in the sunlight. I lifted it up to the sun and it's a really nice color. For this piece, I would probably expect to get 12 to $16. Those crackle glass pieces don't always sell for a whole lot of money. Um, but I thought that was a nice piece. So I usually fall for crackle glass, it's just, I like it. All right, so next we're gonna talk about dogs. <laughs> if you watched the shopping video, we bought two shoe boxes full of dogs and we paid $10 for each shoe box. So one of the shoe boxes was just full of little itty bitty dogs. And as I was looking in the box, I could kind of make out a lot of the dogs. Uh, they were, from what I could see, made in Japan. I did not see any English dogs. I did not see any German dogs. They were mostly made in Japan. And the thing about made in Japan dogs that I've noticed as a selling trend, and perhaps you haven't noticed this, but this is something I've noticed personally, is the cartoonized Japan dogs, like the spaghetti poodles, the dogs with the really big eyes that are just like ridiculous pinks and blues, and just the cartoonized dogs sell for a lot better than the realistic dogs. Now I'm gonna pause the video right here. We've got a train coming. We'll pick this up in a second. Okay, now we're good. All right, so um, as I was saying, you know, the realistic looking fine, uh, bone china dogs don't typically sell for lots of money. They do sell, don't get me wrong, they do sell, but you're not looking at like lots of money. People usually, lot them together and sell them as lots uh, because there's potential to make more money. So going through these dogs, we do have a couple pieces that I'm gonna just show you because I like them. Uh, these pieces particularly, these ones are actually glass. I found three that are glass. So there's this one and then there's a couple smaller ones. Uh, this little guy right here. So I've got some glass ones that I pulled out of here that I thought were interesting. Um, I think those will do pretty well. I've also got some families of dogs. The families will do well. I, I've pulled out about three families. So right here we've got a bulldog um, and he's got two puppies with him. I believe we have a, it's either a train walker, coon hound or a beagle. And then we also have, I can't remember what the other one, oh, collies. So we've got three families of dogs. Those ones will probably sell between eight and 12. Sometimes the families of dogs go for 20, but I'm trying to be conservative in my estimates. So I'm gonna say between eight and 12. Um, and I'm seeing another little family here, I don't know. I did just find this little Boston Terrier in the mix, which I was kind of pleased with. He's kind of sweet. A little Boston Terrier. And I found a dachshund. Unfortunately, his little tail got knocked off. For these little guys, for the singles, I would expect to probably get between four to six dollars. Uh, the singles are not gonna go for a lot of money. Singles are a harder sell. But then you've got like little guys like this that are just like, I don't even know what breed this is. But honestly, it's gotta be like the cutest, the cutest little dopiest thing. It kinda looks like a frog, but it's a dog. So, so we've got a whole, um, oh, speaking of frog dogs, check this guy out. I didn't even notice him until just now when I looked down. I mean, that thing is like, yikes, am I right? 
<laughs> so anyway, that was the box of small dogs. I know absolutely I'm going to make my money back. It's just a matter of how much I'm gonna make in addition to that because right now I have the Collie family listed and I have the um, the Train Walker Coonhound family listed and they've already surpassed $10. So I've already made my money back. The rest of it here is just profit. Pretty pleased with that. <laughs> now the second box we got, the dogs were a little bit bigger. I did open them just before I did this video. I actually opened these yesterday. Um, the reason I bought the second box was actually because I spotted this guy through the plastic. He is the reason that I uh, that I bought the second box because really the small figurines are what interests me. So I bought the second box again, all made in Japan. Uh, they're all marked Japan, hand painted Japan, and this one is Japan sticker. And this one is Japan, Napco. Um, so they're, they're all Japan dogs. Uh, for the larger Japan dogs, probably 12 to 15. If they're not chipped, unfortunately, like this little guy, he's got a chip on his tail. So, I don't know. For this guy, the little guy with the newspaper, he's gonna, make, he's gonna be my money maker out of this lot. I'm thinking for him, and he is actually painted really well and he has a little silver sticker on him i wish i could make out that sticker because his paint job is is actually really nice and it makes me think that maybe just maybe this guy is not japan but i just don't know what the sticker uh this guy is probably going to be at least 20 dollars by himself because of the newspaper because he's a dalmatian because he's so well executed, he's going to make the most money. <laughs> I guarantee it. So anyway, I think that's everything from our haul video. Um, the dogs are going to make us the most money, without a doubt. Uh, it's just it's going to be work pulling them apart and putting them in you know families and seeing which breeds are which. And some of them you can't even make out what kind of breed <laughs> what the breed is. So it's gonna be work putting them out there, but uh, I'm pretty pleased with the haul. I love the dogs. I'm so excited about them. There's probably gonna be a couple that I hold on to. Drew has already taken the naughty dog. If you follow me on Instagram, you probably saw it. It was a little dog that was actually like poopy, and he already took it. He's it's gone. I can't even show you because he took it. If you follow me on Instagram, you probably have seen it. Um, but he took it. Uh, but yeah, this this is everything. I'm gonna roll into the footage of Andrew's trip to the flea market. You guys can see the postcards that he got, some of the other stuff that he got. Um, some of it has already been listed on eBay, uh, but <laughs> all these questions about the postcards got me thinking, you know, maybe I should put that footage out just because everybody's wondering where they came from. So um, tomorrow is a shopping video. I believe I'm solo tomorrow. It's like a, a solo day. I don't know, we haven't done one of those in a while. Make sure you stay tuned for that, and I will see you all tomorrow. Later. Okay, well my lens is still a little foggy because I had my camera inside and I brought it outside and the humidity is like seven million degrees, but it is currently nine o'clock in the morning. You're probably wondering what kind of video is this. Well, Andrew was at the flea market this morning with John at 6.30 in the morning. He got home at eight o'clock and he's got three giant boxes. He spent $175, and he's been dying to show me this stuff, and I told him, you can't show me until I have my camera because I want it to be like a mystery unboxing. I want to see the stuff for the first time with my viewers. So he's over here digging through his boxes, super excited. So I bought a huge postcard collection, was part of it, and there's a lot of other paper stuff in here. From 1988, exhibition at the Smithsonian on Superman and these are really cool because like it gives you all the info on the exhibit. I'd love to find one of those tin toys. Oh that would just like I would kill for that. But these are, these are pretty cool and there's like four or five of these. But like look at these albums are full 
of postcards. Now, I, you did say something about maybe possibly there being Halloween. Uh, there could be. I saw some Easter. There's lots of real photos. A lot of this stuff is turn of the century. Um, this one's really cool. I was looking through here. This one, this is a fun one. This is actually from 1906. This is Erasmus Hall High School in Brooklyn, New York. Nobody really cares about Erasmus Hall, Brooklyn, New York. But my mom went to high school here, graduated in 1970 with Donnie Most from the Happy Days. So a lot of people remember Happy Days and Ralph Mouth, the redhead. And she went to high school with him there. So, But this is actually a 1906 postcard of her high school. There was a second one in there. I think this one's a little later. You can see the Model T's in the foreground. But these, I mean, it's just, there's so much in these boxes and albums to go through. It's going to take me forever. But I got these huge, three huge albums and the two boxes full of stuff. There's other paper in here. There are, oh, these are really cool. You don't see these very often. Where are they at? Wait, wait, wait. I just They're modern. Them. They're modern. Nuh-uh. Yeah, they're modern. Those? These are modern. Oh. Oh. That's modern. Um, oh. But check these out. Stereo view cards. Look at this. East River Bridge. I mean, this is just like really cool stuff. N New York police officers in uniform parading. This is, this is cool. This is very cool. Madison Square at night. I mean, like... I couldn't pass this this whole grouping of everything here. This was a hundred dollars, and I, and I know I'll make my hundred dollars back and then some on this pile here because there's some really great subject matter. Even if you sell each postcard for a dollar, a dollar a piece. There's probably a thousand postcards here, even if you got a buck a piece. So that's pretty 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 cool. Um, <laughs> let me pull out the boxes of glassware and we'll go over those. All right, sounds good. Okay. Go ahead. Alright, this is really cool. It's hand turned, hand carved, and it's marked Made in Soviet Union. Mm -hmm. So, you can date it to a time period based on whether it's called USSR, CCCP, Soviet Union. Um, how they mark their stuff is, is going to help you date it. I thought this was pretty. This one's marked. I was just grabbing like all the kind of like flowery, pretty vintage stuff that you normally grab. And if we don't like it, it'll get donated, you know, if, it, if it's nothing super special. I usually don't grab uh, transfer wear. It's usually, there's sometimes we make exceptions, but usually transfer wear is just a hard to sell. Um, I know the market has been soft on Stangle. Not in big pieces. But that is a beautiful, awesome piece, yeah. It's awesome. Yeah, I saw that. I was like, oh, gotta grab that. Stangle's good. That's huge. Okay. Um, I did grab some oddball salt and pepper shakers. He had a bunch of different stuff there. Those are cool. Those are clock towers. Gap Town Clock. That's been neat. These are little women. They have a price tag of $28 on the bottom, too. This is really cool. Um, it's signed, it's dated, it's 1983. He's got a coin in his pocket, a, like a legit real Chilean coin in his pocket. Um, it says 94 on it, but the detail that's in this, it's all hand done. Yeah. And it's signed, it's a really cool, really cool elf piece. That is neat. Oops, I almost dropped him. <laughs> I had to save this. Um, the glass is broken, but what's really cool is they took an old tintype photograph frame and they put their stitching artwork inside of it so it could be 1860s, 1870s. I'm not quite sure. It's, um, it's, it's really neat. It's got a scene with a sailboat on the water, it's very detailed for such a small piece. So again, just something I couldn't see just getting thrown away. Somebody's gonna like that, that's, that's a neat vintage piece. 
don't forget to like and subscribe and if you've spotted something that you just can't live without don't worry i've put a link to her etsy store down in the description